This is Cab Class with Gary, Mark and Sean. And we're asking, are you a classy cabbie or a dirty old dog? If you think you're a classy cabbie, maybe you have a story to tell and you don't mind us digging out your past, then get in touch by emailing us at newcabclass at gmail.com. Gotta love it. That's Cab Class with Gary, Mark and Sean. Hello everyone and welcome back to Cab Class, the brand new podcast where we interview your favourite cab drivers. We'll find out a bit about their history and of course if they're a classy cabbie or a dirty dog. Thank you everyone for listening, we appreciate every listener, the feedback keeps coming in, it's getting better and better every week, we really appreciate everyone who gives us all this positive feedback has been excellent. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at London Taxi Radio so you can get all the videos sent to you. You ain't got a faff about looking for them. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'm Gary, one of your hosts. Next to me is my old mucker, the Silver Fox. He laughs at his own jokes. Chelsea Mark. Ha ha ha. How you How's it going, mate? All right, mate, yeah. Don't talk about football this week. No, please. we don't do we football. Can't do football. No, we done football week. last week. We've got a black week. armband on. We lost Frank. You was like a dog with two towels last week talking about football. Since we started this uh, podcast thing, Chelsea have just gone down here like Franz Glamour. No. Like, oh, what's going on? I know. You try to call him sick. I weren't having it. I've done it. It's I can't mad, pick you it? up. And then... You keep bringing in supporters who have got like a new album out. Bring us a Millwall fan. We want an, <laughs> we want an ugly Millwall fan and not the start talking about Orion football. Fan. Yeah, an Orient fan. We could pick on him. But all of a sudden, you keep going, oh, this is an Oscar fan. Oh, here comes a West Ham fan. Here comes. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Don't do it to me, mate. How you been this week? All right, mate. I, I, I went to work yesterday for the first time at ages. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it ain't easy, mate, is it? No. God almighty. Oh, so I've worked sitting in doors. I'll be honest, uh, the walls are closing in a bit indoors. <laughs> The kids, I love them to death, but they're driving me poor. Yeah. I've got the cat and dog. They follow me round the house. It's like the animals at War Memorial. <laughs> I'm going, yeah. going a bit bonkers. I've got, I've got three that. animals. It's like a zoo in my house. It's oh. mad. And because of lockdown, they've become really needy. They can't believe you at home all the time. So, like, no. they're doing your heading. Honestly. But um, we've had some good news this week. And I'm sure the man who puts this all together, the man who uh, sorts out the checks, the man who bounces them around, Sean Paul Day, can you tell us about a bit about this great news we've had this week? Well, it would be un- unbecoming of me, wouldn't it, if I didn't actually mention the resounding success yeah. of last week's High Court case. I know there's been one or two anti-taxi zealots making themselves busy in their basements, but we can't take away, can we, the absolutely remarkable success of that ruling. And, and it is their most comprehensive, conclusive and damning victory yeah. against TfL's flawed policies, transport policies. I mean, we've got to say that, I know it's a bit bleak out there at the moment, isn't it? And people are having a hard time. But nevertheless, this ruling really does reinstate us as being integrated into public transport. It really does solidify our special status as taxi drivers. That is what we've wanted for such a long time. And I think just to come, when everything was at its bleakest last week, when people didn't think there was a way forward, couldn't see a way ahead and especially that's been compounded on by lockdown hasn't it and yet you have this result that has firmly come through on the side of taxi drivers and it's not before time really is it and so i think it's such a a a damning verdict from the judge it's like you wrote it it was just unbelievable wasn't it it was was, it's amazing in every way she smashed them out of court and made them look and we were speaking about the day before it was a little bit yeah you know fingers crossed but it never goes our way so it probably won't this time and then what she didn't just go our way she went our way big time big time i mean conclusively and and scathingly on cfl and the fact that they haven't put in due process in coming to the conclusion with all these street space schemes. So I think it's a brilliant result for the country. And I've got to say this, if they choose to uh, appeal, they choose to respond, and they've all already got to appeal to the judge who's denied them an appeal. So they've got to get over that obstacle. But if they do choose to appeal, then really, I mean, this could be an absolutely PR car crash for them. Yeah. Because they are going to be persecutory and prejudicial against the most vulnerable in the community. Yeah. And so we would say that. And with the taxpayers' pay. And with, te- with, our, with our money yeah. as well. Yeah. And so we would say, don't waste people's money. Don't waste public funds on, on, on appealing this. What you've got to do is be inclusive 
and get rid of the persecution, get rid of the prejudice, and actually maybe there's a way ahead. I think Sh Sean has finally earned his cape, isn't he? He's had him here, or <laughs> yeah, a right. and he's finally I, done I, I, I know I would say this because he's standing here with me, but he's the, he's just says what I want to hear. He's brilliant. Sean, you're the best mouthpiece in the in the cab trade by, by none, and I mean that. And he knows I'm he knows I'm loving the death, but it is. And what you just said is brilliant, and I'm so pleased for the cab trade and for you in particular that the work you put in and it, it, it is in our, and I mean that as and well a special shout out for you tag and yeah, well, yes, every, yeah. I mean, uh, really uh, everybody who has supported you tag yeah, in this yeah. I mean it's, it's a gift for all of them and like I say things are hard at the moment so we're not going to see instantaneous results no. but nevertheless hold in there because there is light at yeah. the end of the tunnel yeah I right? appreciate it yeah, Cab Class with Gary Mark and Sean it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that Now it's been a great week, and it's about to get better. Now a few people are oh, it's an hour long, oh, you know, I've let me listen to it for an hour. Well, I'm going to let you know, this one could be a little bit longer, because we've got a man who's got plenty to say. He's been great, we're so happy to have him here. He's come all the way down, at the goodness of his heart. Please, I'd love to introduce Tony Walker. Tony Walker. Oh, Afternoon, gentlemen. Pleasure oh, yeah. to be here. Tony, right, Tony, thanks I, for coming, mate. You're more than welcome. But this isn't just Tony Walker. This is the Tony the Walker. The Tony Walker. Oh, yeah. my, yeah. Head, my head is swelling. I won't be able to get out the cab. <laughs> great, great, great to meet you. Our fillers, I know you because I've seen so much of you on telly, and especially yeah. preparing for this. And, and honestly, mate, it, it, it's, where do we start? Well, we can leave now if I'm he's, finished. He's, we can show up. I've met him for an hour before this, and, and we're in for a treat because it's, it's well, old on your hats time, well, isn't it? We're going to have nothing to talk about. Somewhere. He's warming up, mate. I'll throw me notes. I'll throw me notes <laughs> over my shoulder. And we're going live. Well, we're going to hand it over to you, Tone. We'd love to hear a bit about where you're from. Mm. Your sort of pre-cab life, really, where you went from growing up right up until knowledge days you've got so much to say and we'll just sit back and enjoy All right. I was born and bred in Bethnal Green born in Bethnal and uh, my dad was a free card trickster which was in them days you know orange box free cards on a sort of box and going up the West End with his little gang a bit like the ones on Westminster Bridge now yeah, yeah? them ones yeah. but rather than little peas and a little bowl my dad had free cards and he did he teach get... you that well, I know how to do it, yes, very much so. And uh, <laughs> my mum, she always liked to drink and uh, she was always in the pub. But the best thing about it is um, we were left to our own devices as kids. And uh, being Bethnal Green, the nearest park was Vicky Park, Victoria Park. And uh, when the fun fair came and, you know, the park and the swings and everything, by the time I was five and six, I had a streetwise education. And my first ever job was in a fruit shop in Bishop's Way. And, uh, from there, next door to the fruit shop, I used to get, in them days, was two bob a week helping the old lady who owned it, putting the, um, all the potatoes up on the shelves and filling all the oranges and the apples on their shelves, you know, made a nice display. But next door, there was a pub where my mum always used to go into. And in them days, you had shy horses with a drain end, you know, delivering the, the beer from the cellar. Oh, is that how they used to do it? Yeah. That's it. And they used to turn up with these mammoth shy horses. Yeah. And I used to have these cooking apples living right next door working in the fruit shop. Tony, I don't want to give your age away, but what period of time are we talking about here? Uh, 63. Right. 1963, 62. So you're talking you were six? Yes, that's my first ever job. So at six you had a job? Yeah, absolutely. I even heard Tottenham had a decent side there. No, they yeah. didn't, they didn't, they didn't. From there, from there I, I um, can't get that in my head, it sounds Victorian, at the age of well, six. Well, I was a street urchin without question and an uh, awful dodger type. I'd done my apprenticeship on the street. So you stole these apples to get the horses, did you? Well, I, I didn't steal them. They were all the ones who had specs on them, it was, you know, on the way out. And Mary Chandler, the, the lady who owned the shop, she said, go on, get, get, give, give the horses the apples. And it was like a house, this horse, the two horses, <laughs> they had name plates on. And I was all sort of shy and tentative. But as soon as I put that first apple in that mouth and I had an affinity straight away with horse. There, yeah. And by the time I was seven and eight, uh, a friend of ours from uh, the flats at that time, because we moved to Waterloo Gardens, they were going to a horse riding up in Dagenham, which from Bethnal Green to Dagenham as a kid of eight years old, it's it's in the country. Yeah, I've said this before, funnily enough, on a different pod. Even Leightonstone was yeah, in the country yeah. from Bethnal Green in them days. And from there, they put me on a little Shetland pony, and the affinity I had straight away with that pony, I'll never forget Sherry, the horse's name, 
they say it run piston even in them days but going back to that it was uh, straight away I knew I had an affinity with horses so then what happened at the age of seven did, did this TV company come along did they approach your school or did they approach your family no they approached the school and then in them days you had um, Paul Harmon who was a director and Tim Hewitt he was they, he was Australian one was Canadian and they didn't understand the class system in England at yeah. that particular time and you had a researcher there by the name of Michael Atzid who was looking for diversity and ch children from one end of the social scale to the other end of the social scale. They already picked the three wise men, the three sort of Kensington boys who were singing Walsing Matilda yeah. in Latin at the speed <laughs> of that day Reading the, the time. But they it? wanted the artful <laughs> dodger type at the other end of the scale. And uh, who, who was that then? <laughs> my school teacher pointed me out with my girlfriend, I love you, she loves me type of thing, kiss chasing in them days, that's what it was. And the four of us, because there was two boys, two girls, picked out. And uh, we got took to uh, somewhere in West London at the time, Shepherd's Bush, I think. They had a, a studio there, and they had a, a, a play park, and they had an adventure playground. And the next day was a Saturday. They took us to Saturday morning pictures. In them days, it was sort of Captain Marvel, Looney Tunes. Yeah, and we, uh, we actually see this, don't we, on the old show? Old Mother Riley, great days. And it was sixpence to get in that your mum used to say go on go with your mates it's sixpence sort of get ready on a saturday morning. what was the show called tony now at this stage your first ever show was called uh seven up was called seven up seven so up. it didn't but the idea of it being every seven years hasn't taken off yet is, is that correct no i will come to that later on and so the prefer uh, pre was uh give me a child until he's seven i will show you the man mm. so it went out after jfk got assassinated that was when we got the the filming done and in April of 64 when there was a, a, a boom of music Mary had fashion Mary Quant you had Twiggy you had the yeah, Beatles yeah, you had the, there was an explosion uh, of, of culture and uh, you had World in Action at the time which was a groundbreaking documentary program and uh, it was shown on that and it oh, yeah. just set a light to the whole of what England stood for at that yeah. particular time you had the thems and you had the hussies and you had most of all the poverty and the rich and it was an unbelievable um like a social experiment social, yeah. yeah yeah and it was an insight and in what was going on in england at that particular I mean, time Tony, did it start off as a social experiment or was it just about tracking people throughout no, their lives never, every seven the years the concept was never ever there that it was going to track people it was just going to be a one-off Right. Now, in the meantime, you had Paul Armand, the director, went back to Canada to make films. Tim Hewitt went back to Australia. And Michael acted, after seven years, he done 29 Coronation Streets and he made his bones in Granada TV with Sidney Bernstein being the head of the on show there at that time. And in 1969, you had a guy called Derek Foreman, one of the head guys there. Michael was a right... You know, he was predominantly uh, successful then doing Coronation Street directing and various other productions there. And Derek Foreman said, Michael, he said, um, I wonder how them kids are getting on. You know, you filmed seven years ago. Just jumping back, so, so you're Did you have any idea what was going on no at seven idea. years old? You no, were just taken I, no, somewhere. Uh, oblivious. Uh, oblivious. Was your family paid? My mum got ten pound in them days, which I never saw a penny. But ten pound. <laughs> you had a probably, job already, though. You know, they bought <laughs> a couple of bottles of scotches, and uh, my dad probably had the other in the betting shop. That's how you know. Yeah. Where he was completely was. oblivious. To oblivious, it, yeah. and uh, I never. Did knew you? Anything. Did you at seven have any say in it? I mean, no. that was no. So, so you were sort of like picked up, tap on the shoulder do it but, yeah. and I know you're only seven but but that was it you yeah. were chosen yeah. you were going to do also, it also was, was you a coach at all did coach? They, no never it, no not no. Uh, trained in a way but did you feel looking back you probably won't remember was they feeding you what they wanted you no, to say never. no never no, well, no, completely no, I was oblivious yeah. uh, completely oblivious what's going to happen I was just an excitable kid and you know not no less than everyone else yeah but the only thing I had more than probably the other kid was more or less po more poverty. Yeah, yeah. You know, my mum and dad were what I would consider less responsible now. But they loved us. I got the love more and respect for my mum and dad. I love more than anything, even now. You know. But blessed. what comes across to me, Tony, is how streetwise you looked, even at that age, yeah, yeah. compared yeah. to the others. You know, I know, I know, we're talking about a class system and the different spectrums, but you come across 
as someone older than seven as a I mean a little bit cheeky a little bit but that yeah. which was after the appeal but, but it, it did it looked to me like like almost that you were chosen because of who you were weren't you, you, you know, probably you was, yeah you but know. the deprivation was there and uh, my yeah. ass was hanging out my trousers <laughs> and I mean you know yeah. snotty nose kid of course you know they wanted a parody from one end of the social scale yeah. to the other social yeah. scale and uh, when you saw it actually visualise it on the TV then it was more of an explosive situation rather yeah. than you know it ain't in a book here yeah. cool, you can see what's how, happening how much of it did you understand at the time did Nothing. they let you leave you to yourself to do what you wanted to do mm. was you aware that you was being Film. There was no coercion at all. It was just blatantly there in your face. What you was at that particular time, whether they liked it or not, it stayed. Yeah. And did all the kids get on? Well, we. It was funny. I'll never forget. It was um, a little uh, Seven Up um, bottle of um, lemonade type of thing, and we had cakes. And I've never ever had a party. And uh, you had the monotone singing, uh, if you say that you love me, like a Mersey group, you know, <laughs> singing these sort of 60s songs. And it resonated with me then, you know, dancing and whatever. And I was pushing them out the way. They were pushing me out the way until one time that I stood no more at seven. I sort of hit him and bashed him in the back. And when Andrew actually got on camera, he said, how did you like them young kids from the East End? He said, they're, they're, they're a bit too rough for my liking. <laughs> yeah. and, um, he was right, wasn't he? They hit me in the back, and I've still got the pain there. And That's uh, when yeah. the three of them sit there chatting. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah. Lovely guys. And uh, I must say, I picked John Brisby up, the very nonchalant one. I picked him up in my cab from Heathrow, and uh, I'm still friends with him today. Yeah, he's the barrister, yeah? Gentleman. Yeah. And um, I took him home, and there, there we were in his house, silver salver. China cups, having cups of tea, talking about his career. He's asking me how I'm getting on, being a cabbie and that. And I thought if Michael Apted could get a snare, yeah. just yeah. as the yeah. man in the street and man doing his job taking him to his ass, well, well, I think, you know. I mean, that's really nice. interesting. What, uh, I mean, I've been hooked on this since I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I absolutely love the idea and the concept of it. How much of it has affected your life? Because I know there's one or two that felt that they were it was dictating what yeah. they was doing in life. Yeah. Was it like that with you? Sean, I can only speak for myself. Uh, when Michael Apted does come every seven years, I say, you got a template there. you you got a clear page. You do or say whatever you like. Ask me any questions. I've got no inhibitions to say, you know, I'm embarrassed of that. Or, you know, what it is, it is on that particular time of seven years. And there's no... Um, thinking oh i'm going to be successful i'm going to have money i'm going to have this so i'm going to do that for the general public to see it was never like that and it was never a pill that i had to swallow to say i don't want to be in an embarrassing situation waltz as well yeah if i'm yeah. in an adverse situation then let the camera see it because why it happens to everybody in the world you all live you'll die you'll smile you'll sad you'll get happy and at the end of the day, you lose parents, you, you divorce, some people do, and it happens what life has got to offer that everyone experiences the ups and downs. And how of many life. of you are left now doing it? Well, sadly, Lynn died, who I've met many occasions, and I picked her up as well in my taxi, believe it or not. And uh, I think there's one, I think there's 11 of us left now. Do they do anything in between the seven years? Do they contact you? Or is it literally back a year before or whatever? How does it well, work? They do the research uh, about two months before. And they ask us uh, what's happening in your life. But obviously, Michael's got to have notes to sort of find out what's going on. I, my, in this case, uh, a grandson was born, my Arthur. From my daughter, she had another baby. Then I lost a house in Spain from the seven years before, because the economical crash, it left us high and dry, my wife and I out there, and there wasn't enough to pay the bill. So it was everything happened, you know, new governments, Blair, then you have, you know, yeah. you had a, a Labour government, then you'll have a Conservative government. In one case, Lady Diana sadly died. Then in this case, it was Brexit. So there's all sort of topics mm -hmm. and news yeah. items that very sort of, you know, historic, historic that's going to sort of be a... Uh, an idea what year you're in if you know what yeah. I'm saying I'll tell you one great clip I was watching uh, I was sitting down with my missus we were watching 28 up yeah. and you're sitting with your wife at yeah. the table and you're having a chat and we're sitting there and you could almost feel the tension between you two that was 35 oh, up 35 yeah. up I do beg your pardon <laughs> and we so were sitting there and you're saying 
they look like they've just had a wrap and then they've pulled it together yeah, and well, sit at that table. The, 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 um, the situation there was, I was talking about Magaluf. And we go there with all the boys and the golfers yeah. every year. And I've been going there for I see, 30... I see, I see, I see, he gets the guy away. Yeah, <laughs> 35 years I've been going there, or probably nearly 40. And, uh, you know, and every year, we, it's like a the jolly up week. It's fantastic. And uh, I look yeah. forward to it. So she, done. she didn't like no. me going. But, you know, no. without being a camera cross male chauvinistic, yeah. which it isn't, it was just... You know, I think I work yeah. hard enough to get a deserved holiday. Yeah. The reason I brought it up without the wife. Without the wife. <laughs> the reason I brought it up was just to show what you were saying, how natural it is, and no airs yeah. and graces, warts and all, as Cromwell said. I can only speak on my behalf. There's no warts and all. What yeah. they do to yeah. the other. Yeah, absolutely. So now we're going to go back in time. Is it fault your career as a jockey? Was that well, between 14 yeah. and 28? Well, when I was 14. Mm-hmm. My dad used to know a guy called Snowy Buckingham. He was a masseur. And in them days, the jockeys had a top masseur to lose weight, hence the... What's a masseur? A masseur. A masseuse. A massager. A massager. A masseuse. I thought it was underground, a masseur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I right? Am I saying a masseur? Well, I've, I've been to a few masseuses in my time. <laughs> right. yeah. You call it a masseur? In yeah. Yeah. And we, we call that one different. Right, if I'm wrong, me excuse my ignorance. <laughs> it was a masseuse. We, we go your line. And um, the situation was, he was a masseuse to all the jockeys. And uh, my dad always knew I wanted to be a jockey. And this snowy Buckingham knew Tommy Gosling, who, where you live, yeah. in Burheath Road That's there, right, just yeah. by Ashton, yeah, yeah. is, um, he had his stables, Prime Lodge. And uh, I wrote to him as a 14-year-old, still at school. And he said, well, come down. We're going to try and turn you into an apprentice jockey. I couldn't wait to get there, coming from Bethnal Green, snotty nose sort of kid. Yeah. Surprised we let now, you in. Yeah, yeah from there I go to Epsom. And straight away, they all took the corners off of my discipline. I was sort of yes or no, so three fags four. Plus the love of the horses and the affinity I'd immediately, and uh, I had to muck out every day. And I went two weeks holiday at Christmas time from school. And I got up every day at six o'clock. So you was living there? I was living there yeah. on, on, the, on the yard, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was serendipity for me, beautiful. And then uh, I will turn 15 uh, in uh, 1970, and I was leaving schools in the Easter, and immediately I knew I was going to be a jockey. And all the careers officers in them days gave all the kids their opportunity to do whether they want to be carpenters or electricians, etc. And I said, no, it's no good me speaking to you, Governor. I said I was, I'm going to Epsom, and I knew my fate was. It's not really the Bethnal Green, is it really a jockey? There is it. No. <laughs> yeah, You've got to be the no. first jockey yeah, to come out. When, when you think my, my brother was a docker, my sister worked as a telephonist, my other brother yeah. was in and out of uh, whatever, Scally, and uh, you know, I thought, no, I've got to, I want to be a jockey. And you sounded like a great grounding. It was a great really? grand. Did the show have any idea on it? No, like, no, I know that no. your great quote in the show is, I want to be a jockey, but it wasn't, you weren't doing this because you knew this show was now... No, no. I, I imagine that didn't have no, a I told you that before, no, I didn't no, know. No, because what I'm thinking, at the age of 14 you said you did this, which happens to be the next show. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that wasn't in your brain thinking, this gives me a story from the show. I can imagine you paid very little never, part of your life. Never, really. never, never no. even knew. No. no. I never even knew they were going to come the second time. No one did. Right, Until okay. Acted got, Michael Acted yeah. got yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. Author, authorization. From, um, so you, so you were already in, yeah, yeah. I'll but this that. would have been about the mid 70s. No, then. 1970. Not 1970 yeah. when you would have been. A, so this is a great time for jockeys as well, isn't it? 1970. Well, I mean, you can imagine. I knew. I opened up the paper. I could read it like the alphabet. I got a very good memory, as you appreciate. I knew every jockey. I knew who the stables they worked for. I could. I knew all the lads who worked for the stables. There was about 14 stables in Epsom at that time. Uh, four apprentices to a stable at the time, and I knew every one of them. We used to meet, and oh, 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 the camaraderie there was second but, but to So none. now you're there, you're working there, but you're still not a jockey. So how hard is that transition to actually then mm. become a jockey? So it's like a semi-pro footballer oh, they're making it. And what it, does it take to make it as a jockey? Well, first and foremost, dedication, 100%, morning, noon and night. A horse would never know it's Christmas Day. You have to work Christmas days. You got to look after them horses. You got to have a. You got to have a passion for horses and a passion for the animal, and um, you you got to be disciplined, and you've got to be regimental in your own way. You got to get up at half five every morning. You got to muck out. 
you've got to uh, groom the horses, you've got to put the saddle on, then you come back in the afternoon for evening stables, it starts at four o'clock, then you have to feed the horses, then you've got to groom them again, then any horses has got a runny nose, you've got to report to the head lad, the, you know, you've got to lift the towel up, see any discharge of any horse or anything, and you've got to monitor the horses that you're looking and after. And you've got to take care of yourself, I'm sure. Well, the weight, in, in yeah. them days, I was only six and a half stone, which was, I never yeah. even thought about it, you know, yeah, you so I was a to. kid, didn't have to. But um, I then come out of racing because I had a, um, a bad uh, experience with the head lad. We had a bad argument. I was only a kid, six and a half. So he hit me over the back with a shovel. Ooh. And my crime was going to his allotment and treading on his bulbs or whatever they were. I don't know. Okay. And, and it all caved in. And yeah. he got a shovel and smashed me over the back with it. Nearly broke me back. And, uh, and that's how the feudal system works. Well, that's how it was, <laughs> truthfully. Yeah. So uh, I went out the game and I had a word with the old man and uh, my dad said, come we go second helpings here. I went back to um, uh, Langley Vale where Jackie Sirrett, my other trainer was. He said, I'm going to give you a month's trial. If you're any good, I'll sign you on. If you're not, you know, go back to London. I was there two weeks and uh, he called me in the office. He said, here's your apprentice form, sign them. Best day of your life. I'm getting emotional here because oh, I'm thinking to meet mum and dad. And what happens is, he says to me, um, you know, you, you, we'll give you a chance. So I didn't know at the time he was 68 years old and it was his last season as a trainer. But I signed these with great excitement. And uh, within three weeks after signing, he called me into the office. He said, as your weight, son, by this time I've gone up to seven tone ten. He, he, so I said, oh, okay, always yes, sir, no, sir, I'm doing all right. There was never negativity. You're always going to be up. Even if you was down, you have to say you're up. I said, I'm fit as a flea, sir. I'm, you know, I can do the weight. No problem, sir. Yeah. He said, I need to tell you, he said, we got a ride for you on Kempton Whoa. on Friday. Well, you could have knocked me down with a feather and... That's the only growl, wasn't it? It is the only growl, but the best is yet to come because I phoned my mum up and I said to me dad, who's a punter, he's, he's, he's in the betting shop every day. I said, dad, uh, the governor said I'm riding at Kempton. He said, when? I said, Kempton, Friday, Friday, be there, get the cameras there, get get, get some photos. My brother turned up, so the, the big day came. And I'm looking at the, the race tomorrow, and I can see Leicester on tomorrow's runners, and I can see Leicester Piggott's in the same race. Yeah, oh, that's right. unreal, wasn't it? That's and unreal. Then, the Lionel Messi of uh, racing. Yeah. And your Lionel fl- Messi and, and George Best all in one. Like and, you lining up with Glenn Oddle. Well, you yeah. can imagine. I mean, I'll go in. The, the, that big day came, and the um, he took me there in his car, the governor, and uh, he said, Go on, son, be changed and be ready an hour before the race. So I go in there and there's all valleys. They all got valets, jockeys. And at number one peg was Leicester's peg. Then you go all for, all for it. You had like Willie Carson, number two, or Pat Edry in number three, seniority, and you know. And I was shipped right to the very end. And at the other end, I'm looking, he's like, it's, and he's just there reading a the sporting life, just as though it's like a matter of fact. And there am I pumping with my heart. Knowing that I've got to go out there and you get a bell. Ding. Did you think you had a chance for the horses on? No, or my no? old Chateau Deef it's called. And if it's French, it's House of Death. Chateau <laughs> Deef. <laughs> <laughs> and it had, it had three legs and a swinger. Yeah, yeah, it has come yeah. back from being fired on its fetlock. And um, <laughs> we had boots on it, which, you know, give it support. And um, the parade ring bell goes ding three minutes jockeys get ready so you put your helmets on you look in the mirror do i look all right the valley gives me 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 silks and says to me you you look swell tony where you go son don't worry break a leg type of thing if you only knew about the horse <laughs> yeah. about he me. shouldn't have said it to the horse <laughs> yeah. as well well we get we get into the parade ring and i look up and see me mum and my dad up. and so proud but I've looked up and I can see my name on the boards A Walker Anthony Walker hence Tony and about 400 out of the old Piggott and there was no cameras in them days as far as um, you know iPhones I wish my brother would have took that photo 
and it was like a dream. You, you're floating on air, and uh, you hear the bell go, where well, the jockeys get mounted, please, ding, ding, and you get up on your horse, and there's the crowd, and you can hear the humming, and then you can hear it. And I'm now, I've got me reins, I've got me straps on me levers, ready to go high, and I'm all ready. And the governor says, go on, you know what to do. I said, yes, sir. And I counted out into the parade, we're on, onto the course. We go down. Was that a machine gun? Yeah, <laughs> that's the horses who's. We get to the, um, <laughs> we get to the start, and we're meddling around in the start, and the um, starter says, your stall numbers. They give the odd numbers first, the even numbers second. And he sort of said, Walker six, stall number six, yeah. Piggott ten, or whatever. And you're oh my God, same name, same sentence, same era. <laughs> and the Brilliant. best thing is, uh, Loving it, yeah. the stalls opened up. I come out about third, I come out good. But my orders were keep to that brow, and I was outside. And uh, I was a bit apprehensive, but it, it made no difference. Like an echo, you're just in your zone. And, Away we went. And what are you fo- when you're riding? Obviously, I've never ridden horse. Most of us ain't. When you're racing, what are you? Fo- are you just focusing on what's in front of you? You're, you're dead. You're completely. Are you 100%, at the mercy of, mercy of your you, horse? You're in that moment. You yeah. are completely dedicated to what you're doing. 100. percent You know, you're going 35 mile an hour going to a yeah. bend. On I mean, horse. we've got to paint a, paint a, a small picture. Uh, most of us don't ride horses, and to race them, you paint a picture. You you can see the other people in the corner of your eye you, but you're not taking no notice what you're not them. seeing and, the, and and all the people are watching this from the far is the the verbal that's going on in the race oh okay yeah. there's a lot of that yeah there's a lot of swearing there's a lot of jockeying for position get over leave it out go over you know and swearing whatever yeah and you know it's intimidating but you've got to stay on your ground you know that's my ground that's my bit of thing you know yeah. and um, are you hyper aware of where you are in the race I wasn't at that time. I was so inexperienced. Well, that was yeah, so you know? far away. And you know, no, the, <laughs> yeah. that's, that, that's that's the camera. As we turn in the bend, I'm, I'm holding my position, and all of a sudden, it was like a puncher. <laughs> I felt a puncher on the 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 the, the, the fetlock. Someone's it, yeah. No, no, the no, horse's just, leg started. Oh, yeah, 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 and uh, yeah. you know, it sort of not broke down at the time, but you know. Yeah. No one punch and it went slow and slow oh, and wow, I thought I've got to get the cigar time. out it was like yeah. a mannequin advert <laughs> yeah. all I could see going further away was the arses of the other jockeys and the horses you won the race after I did win the race <laughs> after <laughs> if you reverse it yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't the idea the idea was I've what done a it moment. What and a it was moment. the greatest moment of my life as you know with all what you've done, that's the greatest moment. So that's yeah. what an accolade, yeah. what a day. Yeah, I mean, done, you've been up, you've done numerous things, and I mean, that, I could that's see, brilliant. Yeah, I could see you got quite emotional there, but what a memory yeah, yeah, to be able yeah. to recall that yeah, in well, such I detail. Mean, you know, I ain't playing football over the marshes with your, your mates in a pub. You know, and you think, I wish I could play with Messi, or I could, could no, play with yeah. Maradona. You can compare it to all different fields. You can say, well, it's like being in a race with Lewis Hamilton. It's like playing yeah, on the yeah, same yeah, field the with Jimmy Greaves. Yeah, it's, the top person. You're the top end of your... Yeah. Of the scale in yeah. that professional. So what happened, school? Tony? Then so right now you're a jockey. So where? Apprentice where, jockey. Right. So where? So where did? Why did it not push on? What happened? Well, after three years in Epsom, which I had, um, my governor now was at the latter part of his career. He, he gave us uh, two months notice that he's going to retire by the end of the season, which was now November time, and. Uh, in them days, you had four to five apprentices in sort of like 10 yards, all around 14 yards around Epsom. And Epsom was my home. I knew every corner. I knew everything about, you know, all the yards. I knew all the boys. And if I would have gone back to another yard, where I was the only apprentice at my stable, I would have had 18 months to get where I was. Hmm. And not only that, if there's four good apprentices, which they were, yeah, you'd have been in the back of the queue. I would have been back of the queue, and uh, the work ethics, of course, would have took me another 18 months to get where I should have been. Not in a conceited way. Yeah. I mean, I already worked for that, hmm. but it's like he's there before me, so he's sort of naturally he's going to go first. Yeah. That's how I perceived it. I Got could you. be wrong now, but um, good horses make good jockeys, and I never rode good horses. Yeah. But, but it's a great experience. And the discipline I learned, it cut the corners off my character of being yes or no, sir, well, free bags. What for I am taking from a lot of this, obviously, 
riding with Lester Piggott is the major thing, but the grounding he's gave you as a person. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Sounds brilliant. When you see servicemen come out of the army, or you see uh, November the 8th when they walk down that mall, you know, they're chest sat, yeah. and they're, you know, they're one of the boys, like, you know, the camaraderie with all that. It is no less than how I've perceived it when being in Epsom in the 70s as becoming an apprentice jockey. I would honestly say the apprentices all love one another. That's how I look. Except the one who clumped me with a shovel. No, he won't. He was a head lad. <laughs> and if I, I like to see him today on a walking stick. <laughs> and I'm not really a wicked Kick man. Just, just don't have cabbages in your allotment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I, I, well, I don't like talking about him. Because no, he's a bad it, it was such ever. a great story. Don't want to end on a bad note. So, where do we now find the cab driving? Where do we find the knowledge? You've come away from the joint. Did you, you did oh, a no, bit yeah. in between or was it straight no, into No, no, then, then I went... From 72, I worked at William Hills. Uh, then, then no, I come out of 73, the stable. Yeah. Then I went down Hackneywick Dog Track um, because I worked at William Hills before that. Right. Then I went into the dog track uh, where all the bookmakers running around as a bookie. Was runner. you looking at point his ear, point Yeah, I can nose, do all that. I can do tick tock. Yeah. nipple. I can do all that. I can, <laughs> I can do tick tock. Yeah, I'll go to the dot and I'll just watch them. Well, what look, if you go look, one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, five, six. Five and one is six. Don't work great with radio. Ten pounds. <laughs> I respect it. that. He's doing it. No. Right. So I can, I can do six. Honestly, that's brilliant. Did, it's did it's you used to get loads of good tips and all that? Was that all part of it? They always give you a good tip. Look left and right when crossing the road. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't eat yellow Don't smoke. Don't eat yellow smoke. <laughs> but then I was learning the bookmaking. I used to run to uh, Acne Wick Dogs. I was having hundreds of pounds on for the punter. Now, if the punter won, I'd probably get 10% off him. And if the bookmaker won off the punter, I'd get 10% off him. So wow. I was the middle man, yeah, yeah. earning money. Like when I was then, but you must understand, by this time it was 76, mm. well, we're moving on. I've got two brothers who were cabbies now. Oh, okay. They were cabbies. Four uncles who were cabbies. Right. It's in the blood. My wife's a cabbie now. Three nephews are a cabbie, plus my sister's a cabbie. So I got on the knowledge in 76. And that's more more than more than the amount of cabbies working now. Yeah, it? that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's well, just the walkers out there. Yeah. Where did you live in the feeder park? No, 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 no. We're nothing like that. And we don't talk shop. I make sure of it yeah, when I we know. go home. I can imagine. Worse, yeah. You know, you can imagine me making love with my wife. Leave on the left of the bed. Full <laughs> <laughs> with the best friend. Yeah, go on. But you know, and then, and then from there, I got on an under fifty bike. My brother helped me, of course. My brother Joey got out in 77, yeah. Queen's Jubilee. Of course, we see you on the show. You did look rather dapper. Did you dress up that day? No, no, no. What, coat. What, what, leather jacket, James oh, Dean? Yeah. No, 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 not at I all. See that, I see that red coat you wore. I think it might have been 28. Well, oh, I was now, James that, Dean Please man, tell me you ain't like, still got right, that. Because in them days, I, I wanted. Uh, I read books and books and books about James Dean. And I thought, yes, I could do that. And uh, yeah. They I, met before the crash, though, didn't they? Yeah, before the crash, yeah. I like that one. <laughs> but going back to... Um, <laughs> In 76, I went up, yeah. I wanted to be a film extra. And right. I went up to the Film Arts Association in my Doing this at the same time yeah, as the knowledge. on the knowledge. Then I, I done that. Then I got me um, FAA card. I shot down to Lexington Street Central Casting. Filled it in. What type of guy you are in them days. Fair hair, blue eyed, short, five foot, whatever. Yeah, walk with a start, I Yeah, yeah bad, bandy legs and whatever. Then as I registered for that, I gone from running around in the uh, Acne Week dogs, the phone rang one day, no mobiles in them days, said, Tony, got a job for you on the Sweeney. Oh, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, the Sweeney. Oh, so wait. if ever you see it, the, the series called Visiting Fireman, uh, they pay me 12 pounds to run around Batsy Park in a tracksuit with the old Bill chasing us. I'll never forget that one. Yeah, you're used then, to that, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. It wasn't really method acting. No, that wasn't method acting. Yeah, that. that was fantastic. No, then I got paid 12 quid cash. Then, you know, I, I've done the knowledge and I got out in Did seven. you get through the knowledge well? Did, was you like yeah, or I did got, they. No, I, I had them back? all. I had Mr. Finley, who was fantastic, but shit scared, absolute terrified of the man. And I'll never forget, uh, he said some street in. There was two streets the same name. And I gave him the one in Araby Street end, and he gave me the, he wanted the one in New Kings Road end. And he said, Mr. Walker, stop changing the questions. And I looked, I was terrified. <laughs> I was terrified of the man. But did they did they know you? Was no. you like no, when you're going there, going, oh, this is the the kiddie on no, telling us. No, no, there, there was no preferential oh, yeah. treatment either, as no. you know. No, it might have gone the other way though. No, but yeah. 
but they 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 I, no. I knew it from my brothers and they told me to storm and crumb yeah. sit down on that yeah. seat don't sit down and speak when you're spoken speak when you're spoken i knew i knew all the rules and but um, all the jockey stuff must have come in good stead for yeah, you yes sir yeah. no sir stuff S- sitting down yeah. on the seat yeah, absolutely. yeah. But going back, that's a great point because I know a few lads who didn't make it because they didn't know how to no, to do the yes you, sir no you've sir. You've got to do that. What you have to game, do that, and there's no shortcuts ever. So I went out on my bike. I done my knowledge, which I've got a very good repetitive memory. I have got a good head for uh, streets, and I knew all the yeah. uh, little apples go quickly, please. Yeah, and I knew yeah, the yeah, terrible yeah, ten, yeah, and they're yeah. like you do, then you do it all. And it moved to Penton Street at that time. No, no, it was at Penton Street. It was 1979. I got my bill, and Mr. Oh, Miller, great time. Mr. Great, Miller yeah, gave yeah, me my bill. So you're the one who earned all the money. No, and uh, I'll, t- I'll never forget what he done to me. Uh, he gave me five suburbs, airport to Staines, airport to um, Richmond, airport to uh, somewhere else, uh, wherever. Then he says to me, King's Cross Station to South Mims um, uh, Services. Services. Yeah, yeah. I said, I don't know, sir. He said, what? What's the time? He went like that. He said, I'm going to lunch. He said, come back after lunch. I'll come back at two o'clock or whatever. And by that time, I ran in the Knowledge Corner Cafe. I went south, in. King's Water South means give me the run, give me the run. <laughs> I got the run, I knew it parrot fashion, shot straight back in, sat down like a little choir boy. He said, did you learn it, Mr. Walker? I said, yeah, yes, sir. Um, yeah, leave on the left of King's Cross, uh, forward Midland Road, straight up all the way, Archway, A1, and there you are, whatever. He said, OK. I had it all ready for you, he said. I said, oh, thank you, he said. Have you got 15p? <laughs> it was 15p in them days. And two photos, you know. Yeah. You had to have two new oh, ones. Yeah. I said, yes, sir, I got them, I got them. He'd he done, done it there and then? He'd done it there and then. And i never forget. Why well, did you walk out and drive a cab? Yeah, I went straight down to BJ's, Brian Glassman, whose son there is Colt's yeah, cab, yeah, yeah. Michael. And uh, his dad, I said, because well, I had a wangle cab for six months. And, uh, no idea. What a wangle <laughs> cab is he'd give you, sign a contract, he'd give you a cab. For the, you have to have for uh, three or four months before you're a cabbie. So you learn in them oh, days, okay. it was a manual, big, heavy, sort of like a tank. Oh, I had absolutely no idea. 2.5. Sort of thing. And uh, I shot down there. He said, Make sure you pay your rent, Tony. I said, Don't worry. I'll never forget JMC 687K. It was a manual and it had a steering wheel oh, like a tank. Manual cab, can you imagine? Oh, I got God. on it, Johnny the Butter. I went straight down to the two bells of in Square, Pimlico Road. My two brothers there. I've gone in, shiny badge yeah, around yeah, as you do. There yeah, I yeah. am. Look at me. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, all the boys. You're like Trigger when he got right. the, the figure. He's pointing his <laughs> chest at I've never right. done yeah. a job. Then all of a sudden, my brother Johnny said, uh, well done. So I'll have egg and chips down to you, <laughs> whatever it was, you know. So I've done that. We got out in Orange Square. I put my light on and a woman come up to me. I'll never get the job. Hyde Park Gardens, please. Yes, sir. In them days, it was 30p clock. Right? Yeah, yeah. I put the clock on. We get to Hyde Park Gardens now. I've got to give me first job away. It come to £3.20. And I had to give it away, which yeah. I did. I did, I did. Like we all do. And I thought, yes, I've done it. And that was that. Oh, Terrified yeah. at the first beginning. How old was you? 20? I was the youngest one to get my bill in my generation at that time, and my group. I was 23. That's young. 23. That's young. Yeah, young to be a cab driver. Yeah, I was just based. Really no, no, 22. I tell you, my birthday September. I got out uh, May. So I was 22 and uh, seven months. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what, not many 23 year olds could do and pass out the knowledge because you're still a bit immature, blah, blah. So I reckon a lot of that coming from the stables and, and that life you led has then gave you the ability to be able to do the knowledge yeah, but at that plus, age. Plus, don't forget all my family, my uncles, yeah, yeah, my brothers, yeah. they were calling yeah, me over still, most days. It's still down to you, isn't it? You're still yeah. not going out with your mates No, I piss. didn't mind the knowledge. I mean, yeah. you know, you oh, sit really? down like we all. Really? I, I, yeah, various things. I mean, I didn't like it over Dulles and when it's pissing yeah. down the rain. Yeah. And, and, you know, I didn't in a calf with your sort of yeah. Yeah. hands behind a sort of yeah. uh, cup of bottle. I never forget bottle. being in Greenwich. It was like minus five and yeah. I sat behind my moped and let the exhaust warm me up, well, I, and I, I wanted to cry for myself. I was like, "What am I yeah, doing?" I'm better than this. Yeah. Yeah. I went <laughs> down Holloway Road one day, and the car door opened. My handlebar hit the car door, and well, I'd done a somersault yeah. over, and the bike sort of was coming towards me. And you know that was scary. But, I remember um, when it was really freezing. I used to know all the 
public convenience is all the toilets that had and heaters, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody thought I was loitering, but I was actually warming my <laughs> hands over the heaters. As long as you only warm your hands. <laughs> as long as George Michael wasn't there, yeah. welcome him. Yeah. How, how ironic, though, that a jockey fell off his bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was a door handle of another Oh, car. that old chestnut. Oh, yeah, 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 that old chestnut. There is, Bob. Yeah. You should have stayed to the rails. You've got yeah. to stay yeah, close so in. So then yeah. I, I went on from there and uh, bought my first cab off my brother-in-law. Yeah, why? No, yeah, 2.5, WYE 564S. Wow, you've got a memory. Yeah. Oh, that's I know, it's madness, isn't it, you remember these things. But even now I can remember runs in my head and, you know, things. Do you still enjoy being a cab driver? Not not well, pandemic out of the way and before, but you still enjoy yeah, it? To me, the cab driver is either work or an adventure. Mm-hmm. I've done the adventure lot for the last first seven years. It right. was an adventure. But then when the penny dropped it, it became a work. You know, it, it seemed to change, and different people were coming into the trade. You know, for the latter years, the camaraderie's gone out the trade. That's I think I a lot it. of that camaraderie's gone because of social media and the fact that we all uh, we connect in different ways now. Whereas before, you didn't have a mobile, so you'd say to your pals, "Right, we'll meet at this rank at well, this time, we'll have a cup of tea and a chat." Whereas now, you're on WhatsApp. Yeah, but you know? in them so days, you had the Granby Grill, you had the Green Badge Club, yeah, you yeah. had uh, various, uh, you had Midland Road. Everywhere had their own sort of. Um, yeah. places up you know yeah. where you eat at night and it was great you know yeah, different times and then all everyone's got a story to say have a guess who i picked well, up they tonight. got a story in my unit yeah no yeah. have a guess who i picked up tonight oh uh, you wouldn't yeah, hear yeah, it some piss artist he's only yeah. left his wallet in the cab what do i do i found 200 quid in it what do i do give him back or yeah. <laughs> all these type of things yeah. and of course you do give it no back. i love to see it when you go past you drive past the green nut and you say so I say old boys because they're older than me, and they're, they're having a rabbit, and you think, no, that, that's how it used to be, you know, pretty smart. Well, I, I've been to them all. I've been to the All Nations in uh, Kens- Kensington there, and I've been yeah. to the one up in uh, Pembridge Road there, in uh, Notting Hill Gate, yeah, yeah. that one. And if you go Hanover Square, and if you go to uh, Savoy at the back there, in the old Howard yeah, Hotel. Yeah. If only they could make a decent nope. cup of coffee. Yeah, so. but you go in there, <laughs> there I'll <laughs> tell you there. what, they're like Doctor Who TARDISes. They are, I know. You know, you go in there, you know there's about ten old? people round. It's right. fantastic. My right. builder mates come at me, Gal, what are they like inside? I said, I'm unreal. <laughs> Sauna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 You want to go like, downstairs. Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah, yeah. they got a pool table downstairs. Yeah, but, you know... The fantastic, they don't know, it's just a bench and the, the people who give you the f- cups of tea, it's a proper cup of tea. You yeah. have afters, you have a jam roll and custard. But you it's know, proper. Us, you but know. us in Bethnal Green, we, we don't drink instant, we're lattes. No, we've got pleachers no, cap. Yeah, pleachers yeah, yeah. cap. Police, yes, please. Fantastic. You know, there's only 13 green nuts left. No. And yeah, there's 13 and they're listed. Uh, the so thing is, though, you, it takes a bit of a while to get into the green nuts because you have to feel a bit qualified, don't you, before yeah. you go knocking yeah, on the door to let you in. Can be a bit clicky, clicky yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I agree with you there, but I mean, you've got to have a bit of troubleshooting about you. You know, you've got to have a characteristic. No. You go in there, I, 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 I won't be uh, intimidated with anyone. No, I, I, I can't see anything intimidating you. No, I, 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 definitely I would, not. I wouldn't go in there if you was in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know that walking out laughing. Now, Tony, I, I don't know whether you've got a knack for it. I don't really recognise them, but you seem to have had more celebrities in your cab. Yeah. Is that just by chance, or do you scour them out? Do you look for them? And no, go, oh, I can't. There's Tom <laughs> no, Jones. No, no, I've had 43 years of driving a cab, and I can go from Alf Garnet to, uh, as I say, Tom Jones, Joan Collins. I could go Johnny Depp. Uh, 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 Robert Downey Jr. I could go on. Lester Piggott, I picked up my hero. Oh, Did you? Yeah. Yeah. And my mother's grave. Did you say I had... he was number six? No, no. He, he, I'll, I'll go in. Um... Was he surprised you'd finished no, that, mate? you got to listen. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Deanery Street, where I'm a regular in Chandler's quite often enough. Philip Chandler's, uh, Chandler's betting shop. I used to come in. Lester was always in there. I got talking to him. Brilliant. And one day he said, Tony, Tony, can you take me up to the maintenance street? I said, certainly. Did he have a mask on? No. Oh, that's blinding. And I got there at three o'clock and there he is looking out the window waiting for me. And I took him up to uh, Baker Street there. And uh, he was with his wife. He had to meet who was buying curtains. And uh, he said, thank you. But he never paid me a penny. He never paid me one penny. It's not that I would have took you. Yeah. No, no, but he would have been nice to be told. He was, uh, and I asked him, sorry, in the rough, sorry I sorry asked him who's the best horse he ever rode. Yeah. My favourite horse was Nijinsky, of course, at them days. But he said Survivor. That was his favourite horse, and I, I was just picking, picking brains with him. He was the genius of all time on a, on the turf. Best, it won't be beaten. 
Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm gutted. I, honestly, we could, I speaking to Tony before, and he's got so much to say. We're going to have to revisit Tony. I think, think we're going to have to do a part two because we, to. we've got to get on to uh, a little game we play at the end of each okay. episode, right? And it's called Are You a Classy Cabbie or Are You a Dirty Dog? <laughs> now, I don't think you're a dirty dog. No. I'm old school. And, yeah. uh, old know. school class. <laughs> no school like the old school. Tony's the I've done stuff. a lot of things driving a cab, I can assure you. And I mean, right. I'm, I've never been an angel. But at the end of the day... None of us are. The principles are between Absolutely. the brethren. And uh, I wouldn't come out of that. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to ask you a couple of questions each. And we would like you to answer them openly and honestly. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll score you. But it's all a bit of fun. It's okay. not, not too well. So I'll start off with a question. Okay, you uh, you've, you've had a touch. Someone's asked you a terminal two e throw. Yeah. You pull up, you get them out. Now, do you sit there and muck them out for five minutes? Oh, let me just uh, let's get that rubbish out. Let me just sweep the back out to see if someone comes up and wants a job away. Oh, <laughs> I've done that many a time. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the way to being a dirty dog, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's called an opportunist the opportunist theft. Yeah. That's what yeah. you call it. Yeah. <laughs> Or it's um oh he's only going there anyway. It can't do no harm. I told you I have done it and uh, sometimes I've regretted it because I've had my collar felt doing it. Yeah, you got oh you got a tug here. Yeah, yeah my, in them days a guy called Cyborgs that used to wait for cabbies. Cy- that was his nickname <laughs> and all the all, all the Brussels out Cyborg. there, all the all the Brussels sprouts out there, the tats, they all knew him. Yeah. And uh, his name was Neil. That was his surname and. Uh, he used to wait for cabbies to do that, yeah. and he'd have even a disguise. But what they done one day, the mini cabs, they found out where he lived, and they got ballast, a firm near uh, Hanslow. What? They phoned up. They had a collection between the drivers, and it come to about thirty quid. That they, they wanted ballast delivered to their house. So it's like um, all this sort of uh, ballast was on this uh, back of a lorry. Yeah, yeah. And they delivered it outside outside his drive. So when he came home, he couldn't get into his ass. Oh, that's And that's fantastic. what the mini cabs done to him. Oh, that's a true bad. story. That's great. But uh, so, I, I'm so going to say, used to that's come his in name. disguise. You what? He shaved his sideboard off. <laughs> that was his name, and uh, he, he was renowned for Sideboard. nicking cab drivers. So uh, I was one unfortunate enough to have my collar felt by him. But um, as I say, I was young and naive in them days, and uh, that's it. Yep. Right, right then, so I've got um, I've got a question. Have you ever um, have you ever uh, drove off with someone's change? No, in fact. In <laughs> oh, fact, no, now no, I'm no, going to pull no, you on this. No, well, no, 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 let me just tell you. Well, I, can, I can reverse that. <laughs> no, because 17 that. years ago, I know the exact date. Yeah. I got in your cab. Yeah. This is a true story, and one of my pals recognised you, so we had a right laugh. You Did were you really it. get in my cab? On my mother's eyesight. Yeah. Really? Anyway, and it was so you were brilliant. You were like a comedy act. Anyway, I've gone to pay because yeah. I'm the cab driver. It was it was something like eight twenty, I think. Yeah. Anyway, I gave you a tenner and you went, I want to be a jockey, and you drove off. No, I didn't. <laughs> and, and you had you had us on the floor laughing. It was so funny. <laughs> It was a classic. <laughs> now, now listen, it's not the principle, it's the money. Yeah, the money. <laughs> why, why, why did you do that? Eight in ten years has gone up with And that's why I've done this show. Yeah. You owe me one eighty. Yeah? All right, well, I can, I can better that. <laughs> better that. I picked Boris Johnson up at the time, who was mayor of London. Yeah. About eight years ago. You yeah. should have drove the beach yet. This oh, is no. a true story, well, and I'll put it up on Twitter on various occasions. He come out of Downing Street wearing that bubble hat he used to wear to sort of make him less distinguished with his blonde hair. Yeah. I thought, it's Boris Johnson, not the mayor. Where are we going, sir? Could you take me to the Ritz, please, he said. We get to the Ritz. It comes to eight, 80 or whatever. There was an odd 80p. He gives me the eight quid. And he says, excuse me, tapping his pockets. I haven't got 80p on me. And he walked away into the Ritz. Oh, no so way. every time I see Mr. Johnson now as Prime Minister now, I look at him and say, Sir, you owe me 80p. <laughs> no way. It's, it's True story. story. I always True say story. You want to know the richest brilliant. man in the pub is, is the one not up the bar. No, is that yeah, all, they're all the same. The same then, <laughs> it's the, probably up there with the publican's wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he would be, Johnson, yeah. <laughs> Johnson would be. I've had a few passengers tell me a few That's stories a great like story. that. All right, let's move on to another one. Uh, someone jumps in your cab and they say, Cool, isn't it, isn't it a nice cab? I normally get an Uber. 
What is oh. your response? Oh. Do you give him a lot of stick or no. do you think I'll no? Say, it's don't, the charm don't, on. don't mention a four letter word with a U in it in my cap. Yes. That's what I always right, say. I said, you get what you pay for. If you mention that again, you're going to go pay a double fare. <laughs> All in good spirits. In good spirits, imagine. of course. There's nothing yeah. worse. You get these cameras because I told them. Right, no, right. Yeah. 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 At the end of Not the day, classy. you know, don't wipe your feet when you go out because you already got shit on your shoes yeah. by getting in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well That's done. Right. It's a good answer. Have you ever broomed a job from point? Front of the rank. I'll, prob I'll, I'll, I'll probably have. No, 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 no. There's two ways of looking at this. If they're unsavoury characters, yes. who I can tell them yeah. in a polite way That's to pass, yeah. go off ski, I would very politely suggest, sir, not this one. Yeah. But as far as being on a rank, Cumberland, wherever, A to B, bread and butter jobs, of course, forward march we go. Yeah. Liverpool, you're at the front of Liverpool Street, they want to go to Middlesex Street. Go, I've them. done it hundreds Brilliant. of times. Yeah, done it hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. Tick. If have you ever overestimated a job just because you didn't want it? Have you ever had someone out there oh, like, oh, how yeah. much would you go to and you think oh, you ain't getting in here, so you well, just no, good no, no, no. So you hit about, a good, you, yeah. you hit it with three figures and they go, whoa, I ain't <laughs> getting in there. <laughs> it's a good question. I live in East, I'm an East London boy. If they want to go East Ham, I can say, yeah, no problem, jump yeah. in. If they want to go to Stretton Mill, I go, oh, mate, you're really oh. good. Go try the one behind. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, if you I'm working, pass, right, if I'm bread and butter working, as in when the punter comes up, they are your bread and butter. I'll go and do it. Of yeah. course. Yeah, that's a very good answer. Yeah, there's nothing worse than you're second and, and he's not no, taking no, no, them. No, 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 no. And he's not. And you no. think, just take them, mate. Like it swings a man to bats. Yeah. Oh, they're the worst. Right. Um, do you? This is. I think this is a pet hate for a lot of cabbies, and I'm seeing it quite a lot. Not in a minute, but pre-pandemic. Then once they want to squeeze on the back of the rank, but their asses are hanging out. Yeah. And they're blocking the buses. I think we know Orchard Street. That bit yeah. of Selfridges is murder. Are you one of them? Do you hang up the back and block the road? I do it occasionally at Mandarin Hotel. Mandarin. That's a two cab rank. Oh, oh what well, up yeah, on the yeah, curb? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, I hit that one. Yeah. That, that's but about, you're not blocking traffic there. No, that's about. I'm, I'm not really a ranking cab. No, me neither. Right. I'm. A, I'm. A, you know. I'm here there. Not an old wanker. No. <laughs> Thank God you're not drinking. But going back, going back to that, I mean, I probably failed a rank on various occasions. Yeah, we all I'm know. No, I'm no different from anybody else. We all over rank now and I, but don't, you know, don't cause people problems. You're well, making us all look you've fun. only got to look at Harrods rank, and the, yes. that, that's a yeah. typical example. You yeah. go from there, and it, it is, that is really a piss take. You know what I saw the other day I can't believe in that, this yeah. uh, um, pandemic situation? Yeah. Back to Walton Street. Worse. Marabone High Street, but on the corner, yes, there's yeah. a Waitrose or whatever. Yeah. They were They're coming the back to nearly um, Mandeville Place. Yeah. Yeah. It was if you oh. never saw it, if you never see it, you would never have believed it. Well, I'm out there every day, I'm sitting, and I don't have a point where listen, you've got to do what you do to get a job, but don't impede other traffic if you're gonna no. swerve it. No. Move on. Right. Okay, we got any more? Oh, uh, I think we're done. Uh, even if he was, I couldn't call this man a dirty dog. No. Even so if he was. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. No, you can't. He's the same with us. He takes a chance. Even the Spurs he... thing, I could have gone the dirty yeah. dog way, but. And he's from yeah, Bethnal Green, you know he's good yeah. stock, and he's managed to make it out, which makes means he's got some intelligence, unlike me. And we've only really tapped the surface oh, of, of, of his of his fame we, and we how, it, how big his show is. Yeah. I would love to come back. One is Sean, who's the most eloquent London cabbie so in true. town. He's fantastic. He beats the drum for us. Yeah. He does everything for the trade. And I won't get my tongue in the eye, Sean, but I can <laughs> yeah. assure you, I can assure you. I didn't quite hear what you were saying. There is no one that. better with your support well, and eloquence yeah, when so you come true. out with your reports to the media. Well, God you bless are fantastic. True story. God bless you. Thank True you story. very much. And you two boys, again, you beat the drum for the London cab trade, which try, everyone mate. does. I appreciate you both. Thank you very much. And at the end of the day, there's no mendacity here on my behalf to you boys. I will tell it how it is, and most of all, I will thank you for your endeavours towards the Black Cab Trail. Brilliant. Thank, thank you, Thanks, so much. Well, 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 absolutely well, absolutely well, blind in person. This is Cab Class with Gary, Mark and Sean. And we're asking, are you a classy cabbie or a dirty old dog? 
If you think you're a classy cabbie, maybe you have a story to tell and you don't mind us digging out your past, then get in touch by emailing us at newcabclass at gmail.com. Gotta love it. That's Cab Class with Gary, Mark and Sean. Sean.